Okay, let's look at a past paper question on assets and bases. This is November 2018, question 7. To answer these questions, we need this acid base, the pH formula. We need the ionization constant of water from your data sheet. But there's always calculations, so all of these general formulas that we use for stoichiometry calculations, we're going to use in this question as well. So it's always acids and bases plus some kind of a calculation. Sulfuric acid is a strong acid present in acid rain. It ionizes in two steps as follows. Sulfuric acid plus water goes to a proton plus this hydrogen um, sulfate ion. And then this hydrogen sulfate ion plus water goes to a hydronium ion and the sulfate ion. So this is a standard two-step ionization. Define a term, an acid in terms of the lowery Bronsted um, theory. An acid is a proton donor. Okay. Write down the formula of the conjugate base of H3O+. Now remember, the conjugate base, to find the conjugate base, you have to take a proton off. So you end up with H2O. Okay. So the conjugate base of the hydronium ion is in actual fact water. Write down the formula of the substance that acts as an amphalite in the ionization of sulfuric acid. So remember, an amphalite acts as both an acid or a base. Okay, So in this situation, if you look at these two reactions, usually the answer to what's an amphalite is water. Okay, But in this situation, um, water is not acting as an amphalite. In both of these, the water is accepting a proton. So if you write water here, it's wrong. This, this ion here, okay, is actually what the, um, the amphalite is because it's, uh, in, in polyprotic acids, all of the steps of dissociation end up being an amphalite because they can go either way, okay? They can either go backwards this one can go backwards to sulfuric acid or it can go forwards to the sulfate ion. So this thing here whose name I've forgotten is actually the amphalite. It says to you, acid rain does not cause damage to lakes that have rocks containing limestone, calcium carbonate. Hydrolysis of calcium carbonate results in the formation of ions which neutralize the acid. Define hydrolysis of a salt. Okay, so hydrolysis Hydrolysis is normally the reaction with water, so we say here hydrolysis is the reaction of a salt with water. So in general, hydrolysis is the reaction with water, but they've said define hydrolysis of a salt, so it's the reaction of a salt with water. Explain with the aid of the relevant hydrolysis reaction how limestone can neutralize the acid. So when we look at this limestone here, we've got calcium ions and we've got carbonate ions, okay? The calcium ions are not going to do anything, but the carbonate ions are in actual fact the conjugate base of a weak acid, okay? So the, um, the conjugate base of a weak acid is actually quite a strong base, and then it can then sop up all of these extra hydronium ions, okay? So you have to look at this carbonate ion and its reaction with water to produce that carbonic acid, that H2CO3, and hydroxide ions. So this is like lacquer complicated to write. So I put it over here, okay, out the memo. And I'm going to put it in here. So, but this is what I'm saying. The carbonate ion here, can you see this carbonate ion that comes from this calcium carbonate? is reacting with water to perform to form this carbonic acid which is a really weak acid but this formation also forms hydroxide ions and it's these hydroxide ions that react with the protons to um, to form water so it neutralizes it so the carbonate ions react with water to form carbonic acid and hydroxide, hydroxide ions. The hydroxide ions then react with 
the acid, uh, or we can say the protons from the acid rain, rain and neutralize it. Okay, so does this make sense? If they ask something like this, you have to know how the salt is going to react with water and think to yourself, how would I have formed calcium carbonate if you want to know if it's a, a weak acid or a strong acid? And the only place where carbonate ions can come from in an acid is from um, carbonic acid and calcium can have come from anything more or less. Okay, so this is the reaction. I think they accept partial steps of this and they might have accepted other things along the way. I'm not 100% sure, but um, this is the hydrolysis reaction of the carbonate ion with water because hydrolysis reactions are salt with water. These calcium ions are just spectator ions. So now for the lovely calculation. The water in a certain lake has a pH of 5. Calculate the concentration of the hydronium ions in the water. So we come and we take this formula. Okay. pH equals minus log H3O plus. And we substitute here. One mark for the formula. One mark for substitution. So 5 equals minus log. Do I have to type this thing in here? Okay. So then if we want the concentration of hydronium ions, this will be equal to um, 10 to the power of negative 5. Okay, because we raise, <coughs> we raise the pH, we raise the whatever the pH is, we say 10 to the power of the negative pH. And so we can, we can write this again as 1 times 10 to the negative 5. These negative powers are kicking my butt. Okay, and my unit is, there's nowhere written here. My unit is moles per cubic decimeter. Okay, because that's always the uh, unit of concentration. These things are so irritating trying to write them in chemistry. Okay, so we've found the concentration of protons. The volume of the lake is 4 times 10 to the 9 cubic decimeters. Lime, calcium oxide, is added to the water to neutralize the acid according to the following reaction. Calcium oxide plus 2 protons goes to calcium ions and 3 water. If the final amount of hydronium ions, the final after we've done reaction, if the final amount of hydronium ions is 1,6 times 10 to the 3 moles, calculate the mass of lime that was added to the lake. So, okay, if we're going to need the mass, we're going to need the relative molecular mass of lime. So let's work that out now before we start so we can substitute it later without a problem. So calcium is 40. Oxygen is 16, so this is going to be 56. Okay, so we're going to use that later. So, what we need to do is find out how many moles of hydronium ions reacted. So we know the initial moles, okay? We know the initial moles because we knew the pH. So we take this, or we know the initial concentration, sorry the initial concentration of H3O plus. Okay, this is our initial concentration of hydronium ions. So now, if we want the number of the initial, the initial, initial moles of H3O plus, we are going to use that formula n equals okay i want to use n equals c over v i have c equals n over v sorry concentration equals number of moles over volume but i need the number of moles so i'm going to automatically convert it to n equals cv so i'm writing here n equals cv remember to write your formula so n equals this number which is so hard to type in okay 
multiplied by the volume of the lake, which is this number. What is going on? Okay. So now if you whip out your calculator or you use your brain and your knowledge of exponent laws, these superscripts and subscripts kill me, you should end up with 4 times 10 to the power of 4 moles. Okay. This is my initial moles. So if we want to find the number of moles that reacted, we take our initial. Okay, this is our initial moles. And we subtract the final moles. Remember they gave you the final moles in the question, the volume of the final amount of hydronium ions is this. Okay, so we're going to do this and we're going to subtract that. Okay, let's just put all the color the same here in this calculation. Initial minus final, and if you whip out your calculator, have you got your calculator? 4 times 10 to the 4 minus 1.26 times 10 to the 3. I've got something like 38740 moles. So these are the moles of hydronium ions that reacted. Now we need to look at the mole ratio. Okay, if we look at the mole ratio here, it's uh, two hydronium ions to one to one lime. Yeah. So let's copy this here. Okay, what's the ratio? Two of these is to one calcium oxide. So if we've got this name this many okay of hydronium ions that reacted it will be 38740 divided by divided by 2 uh, so calculator 19370 so it was 19370 moles of calcium oxide was added okay so now we want to find the mass of calcium oxide so to do that we're going to go in M so the mass of calcium oxide is going to be equal to 19370 multiplied by remember we found the molar mass earlier it's this 56 so the mass of calcium oxide is going to be I get my calculator tells me 1084720 grams so you could convert this to scientific notation if you wanted which is what I saw the memo did and then you get 1 comma 1 comma 08 times 10 to the power of 6 grams or you could convert it to kilos and say that you had 1048 kilos like that but either way there is your final answer